how Ninja Kamui went from amazing to unwatchable. When Ninja Kamui first dropped, it was amazing. Facts. The internet was blowing up. People were talking about it everywhere. They were even comparing it to John Wick, saying shit like, if John Wick had an anime, 10 out of 10 stars. I did see that somewhere. I don't agree with that though. How would you? Haven't John Wick uses a gun. Animation in a long time. Not in the past decade. Mm. Stop the cap. Yeah, I gotta be cap. They gotta be cap. It's basically John Wick's better version. How is it John Wick but better, chat? I don't get it. John Wick uses guns. What that shit just say? Don't John Wick use guns? I'm sorry, man. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking about it. You mean this? See, this is what you're I didn't even about? get to that point. I stopped at episode three, bro. What I'm seeing right now is new. I stopped watching it. I lost track of what was going on and lost all interest, bro. How you had the world in your hands and fumble it all? This is what you're talking about? I'm just a beautiful human being who doesn't want to stain his reputation with any spite. Is that a black guy? This is better than John Wick? I can't believe I couldn't even get hard playing with those bastards. What? What? Wait, no, huh? wait, no. wait, what do you mean by that? Wait, Chad, what's what going on, bro? About, by the last episode, this show had completely lost all of the momentum that it had built up. But how could a show that started off like this possibly fall off so hard? First of all, there's a lot of things that I think this show does wrong, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna just try to condense it to these three things. But first, let's talk about what the show actually does right. All right, so you start with the positive and with the negative. Love it. Yo, episode one might be peak, bro. Episode one and two are peak. How you fumble so hard? It really pulled a uh, Promise Neverland on us, season two. The fight was so good. Oh, what? see how you go from that to this? Did they lose the budget or something? How did they do that? The CGI just cut it or something? What, what happened, bro? They went from me loving the show to me not watching it at all, bro. What is that? What the f is that? <laughs> when the show transitions to the mecha suit fights, it just completely loses everything that it had that was going for it. And for no reason, which brings me to the first problem. This is the Fail. kind of stuff that we all wanted to see. Where was all of this in the last half of the show? I'm saying. These fights have no motivations, no suspense, what is no that? tension. A war frame? 99% of the time, they're just fighting just to fight. It's the same template-driven sequence every episode. They're talking about what to do next. They get jumped by some ninjas, and then they win. Repeat that every episode. There's nothing that wow, gets you so invested in each it. individual fight that happens, and there's nothing that really differentiates any of the ninjas he has to fight in order to get to the boss. Every single one of these fights plays out the exact same. The suit that Hegan gets is supposed to be his big power-up moment, but he doesn't do anything at all to earn it. And when they have the big reveal, it doesn't make him feel any different than he already did. Like, imagine seeing Goku turn Super Saiyan for the first time, but mm. it was just the most underwhelming thing ever. the transformation i was hoping for the show starts off by explaining that he was one of the three strongest ninja that came out of the organization okay then they cut to a fight where he runs in 1v5 he gets his ass beat wakes up and then he's got the suit on what nah, that, that can't Emotion. be real chat that can't be real right he did not go to sleep and wake up with a suit on right how he like me bro whenever i wake up i wake up with different suits on every day man how he do that I thought this was fiction not real life he's got the suit on what emotions are what make fights exciting they give True. fights meaning and purpose you want to see characters get pushed to their absolute peaks because it gives the audience a moment of suspense where it just might Love maybe be possible that their favorite character could lose yeah seeing them push past that ceiling even when the character themselves didn't believe that they could is really fucking cool mm. because it's relatable it gives the fight an entirely new meeting all might versus that no moo Naruto versus Sasuke, Goku versus Frieza. You could see it on their face. You could hear it in their voice. These are Those true. Those fights actually meant something. But it Get all it! comes from the buildup. You have to take the time out to give the audience a reason to care for these characters. You have to give them someone they can root for. But none of these things would matter if we didn't actually have interesting characters. Which brings me to the next point. The characters suck. There is no character development whatsoever. 
nobody learns anything and nobody grows or evolves as the story progresses i haven't seen it so i can't even speak on this that much all i know is i did like him but from when i was watching it i had i had no idea what the hell he was or what he did or any of this stuff bro i was hoping it was going to teach us some of that when we watched it but from looking at this video they didn't teach y'all when y'all was watching this did y'all have like a favorite character and who was it let me know in the comments below single one of these characters feel like they were just copied straight from a generic template you have Mike, the good-natured cop that's uber-focused on trying to get justice, but he's held back by a corrupt police department. His kid was killed in an accident, and his wife left him because he was too focused on his job. So that is kind of stereotypical. Now, he's still way too focused on his job. You have the tech-savvy hacker characters that just magically solve all of the show's problems. Emma was the one <laughs> character that actually had some sort of depth, but it definitely didn't go anywhere as the story goes on. Then you have the main character. This guy is just horrible like really he has one default emotion the entire show he barely talks and he's just really boring to watch mm. how are we ever supposed to connect with this guy when he doesn't express himself at all it just feels like they're trying to guilt trip us into caring about this character because his family gets killed in the first episode but they don't do anything else besides that to even try to make this character interesting all of the characters fit their roles but there's nothing that makes them unique there's nothing that makes them memorable it's just insane how much of a difference in quality this show has compared to a show like Vinland Saga. You have Askeladd, Thoris, Thorfinn. You could pick pretty much any character in that show and they're all amazing. Mm. Askeladd understood exactly what he took from Thorfinn, saw the path he was going down, and tried to help him in his own way. But he also had his own stuff going on that was completely separate from what was happening with Thorfinn. And then there's Thorfinn. When the show starts, he literally has to learn how to kill. Even when he has the perfect chance to kill Askeladd at the beginning of the show, he's still too scared to do it. So to watch him go from that to not even being able to count how many people he's killed by the end of the first season makes him a really interesting character just by itself. But, the but then at the end of it, doesn't he come like, doesn't he become Martin Luther King Jr.? Having them hands, is that good enough for us to be like, oh, he's a good character? So some of my favorite characters are like Vessel Stampede. The reason why I like Vessel Stampede is I like his morals, I like what he stands for, and I like his attitude towards life. But if you can't connect with a character, how do you connect with an anime? Because like a lot of people find a favorite anime character through the anime, and that's what makes them watch it more. So for this anime not to have any connecting points to any characters, that means it's kind of like, watching like a filler episode the whole time huh but the show takes it a whole step further in the second season now compare all of that to this <laughs> There's nothing that ever gets you invested no, in the main character and his goals. It's the exact same revenge storyline you've heard a million times before, but there's nothing else to the story that actually makes you want to continue watching, which is the next problem. Lord of There's no beats in the story. It's very linear. At no point is there any sort of tension or suspense. There's never really anything to look forward to as the story progresses. You can pretty much guess exactly what's going to happen, and the main character always wins. This is the same issue I had with Hell's Paradise. The main character always wins hey, against a hey. bunch of bad guys that I don't really care for at all. Or I don't agree with that, but I might be D-riding. I might be riding, but I liked Hell's Paradise a lot. No, I didn't connect with Gabi Maru, but I did like his attitude, and I did like his character. I don't relate to his character, but I did enjoy his character. I feel like Hell's Paradise had a perfect blend of showing us more powers that he had, yeah he's op but it didn't show us from the start that he was op it made us wonder how strong he was the side characters are really what made that anime great because of all their emotions and all the things and the backstories that went with that i think a better way to say it is the show hasn't given you a reason to actually give a fuck about him if i wanted to watch a show where the main character always wins why wouldn't i just watch one punch man or that is true eminence in the shadow at least with that show from the very beginning, everybody knows that the entire storyline is just complete bullshit. It's just Sid dicking around cosplaying as Batman. And that shit's actually what the hilarious. Heck? This show takes itself way <laughs> too seriously for a show that doesn't add anything to a storyline that we've already heard a million times before. The only thing that the story hypes up is the big fight at the end of the show, but they don't do anything to make the journey to get there exciting. Why would I watch this show when I could just watch Demon Slayer that does the exact same thing, but way better? At the beginning of the show, they say that this is the big bad end goal villain. 
But before we get there, there's these 12 demons that you have to get through first. Now that's not to say that every single one of these fights were amazing, but there was at least one moment in the show that completely grabbed your interest besides Facts. the end fight that we already know is coming. Facts. Versus here where they just completely ditched the good part of the fucking sh the only good part of the fucking show, man. The crazy thing is, I think everything that I mentioned so far are just surface level issues. Oh. This last problem I, I think is the fundamental issue with the show. Talk to me. Is the missing biggest criticism gimmick? I can give this show is the fact that it's just missing something. The first one to three episodes were great, but after that, it just starts to fall apart. The entire time, it just feels like you're waiting for something more, something else to the story that would immediately hook you, something that would give you a reason to continue watching the show, and it just never comes. And I think the problem is that it's just missing some sort of gimmick that makes it unique. Something that gets you invested in the reason why the main character is doing what he's doing and unfortunately it has to be something other than just because his family gets killed and he wants revenge. Chad, do y'all feel like that's a good enough reason? I feel like that is a good enough reason. If my family got killed, I'm getting back on everything and everyone. I don't give a fuck who you are, the president, the secretary of defense. You're, you're getting cooked, bro. I'm finding you. I'm finding your family. I'm finding everybody. That's just me though. I thought that's a valid reason to get some get back, but not to base the whole story off of. So you telling me that you, if you had an autobiography, not even auto, if you had a biography and you got some get back on your, your family, you wouldn't want that to be part of your main story. I would want to be part of my main story. Some of his points don't make sense because there's other mediums out there or other shows that do the same thing, but better. I just feel like this show was ass, not because of character not having no emotion, not because the main story was him getting some get back because if, if it was about that, I would watch it. It's just ass. Unfortunately, it has to be something other than just because his family gets killed and he wants revenge. The problem with that story is, like I said before, that it's been told a million times before, but every other, every, like, like every other version of this story is way better than what they have here. There has to be something else that the story explores that separates it enough from the rest of the pack. Attack on Titan had Titans. What are they? Who are they? Where did they come from? There okay. were so many directions that that story could have gone and okay. all of them would have been interesting enough on their own. Demon Slayer had Tanjiro trying to figure out a way to turn his sister back to normal. Vinland Saga went all in on illustrating how deep the whole of revenge can go. All of these things are interesting because they give meaning behind what's actually happening in the story. It's the same kind of John Wick revenge type storyline, except John Wick has fucking Keanu Reeves in it. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Dick but Ryder. because this story never branches off into something else, it just makes it really boring. There's no originality within the story whatsoever. It's like a disease or a plague or some shit that just infects every other aspect of this show. The story, the characters, the fights, all of it. It just feels like the show did the absolute bare minimum in every aspect. Like nobody even really tried. And the worst part about it is that they just bait you in at the very beginning of the show. That is true. But they don't follow through with it at all. 